The choices and consequences you make as a player contribute significantly to what makes the Dragon Age series so popular and entertaining. Every player has a unique experience based on their choices, for instance, which range of what race and gender their character is to how they choose to rule an entire nation of Thetis. There's no shortage of ways a warden can die. Drag this deserter back to the Order. I can't do this anymore. I never asked for this. This series has provided its players with hundreds of options, three games, and a large number of DLCs. Hell, there's a whole website you can upload your world state in called the Dragon Age Keep. But what decisions from Dragon Age were the most difficult to make? Here are the top five hardest choices you'll have to make in the Dragon Age franchise. The King of Orzammar Many players in Origins were perplexed by Orzammar's decisions. The most important is the choice of Haramont or Balin as king. Although Haramont is the morally correct choice people choose, in retrospect, Balin is actually the better choice. He helps the castless and improves relations with the surface, etc. However, unless you're actually a castless dwarf, there really isn't any reason why you would support Balin over Haramont without knowing the future of that consequence. In the epilogue, it is revealed that if Haramont is chosen, Orzammar will become a breeding ground of revolts and unrest. So regardless of your personal choice, it kind of breaks the roleplay aspect. No one in the game can see the future, including you. It's very difficult to justify making Balin as king in the heat of the moment. And while you should hate Balin if you're a dwarf noble origin, the good choice you thought isn't always the best choice. Go figure. Anders Fate Of course, in the Dragon Age franchise, we know there's always an apostate that betrays us right at the end. So whatever your relationship was like with Anders, in the end, he lies to you by convincing you to accompany him on a journey to create a magical potion capable of extracting justice out from him. You end up providing the key ingredients for the Chantry's bomb later on. At the end of the second game, Dragon Age 2, Anders blows up the Chantry, which sparks the Mage and Templar Rebellion. Whether you agree with Anders' actions or not, his fate is what made players question their own morals. Some members of the party, most notably Sebastian and Fenris, want Anders to be executed for this terrorist act. You are faced with a major decision as the protagonist in the game. Anders has reached his breaking point of rebellion and does not actually believe you will end his life as a result from his actions. And I know many players struggled with this decision, including those who romanced Anders personally. I remember sitting at my desk just shocked about what to do. And of course, Anders will not be present for the final battle if you kill him. If you save him, he will join the Mage's Rebellion and Sebastian will abandon you. This, once again, is a morally gray area for many players in the fandom to choose from and I know it actually sparks quite a debate within the fandom. While this isn't ideal for a fandom, it does show how good the writing in Dragon Age actually is, because it challenges those morals as well as different perspectives on our personal lives reflecting in a video game. The Lands Meet if Dragon Age Origins was your first Dragon Age game, the lore, plot, and setting of Thetis may actually be difficult to grasp at first. And the Lands Meet decisions didn't help either. While planning for the meeting can help you interview who is the best fit for the monarchy of Ferelden, the cutscene makes it quite difficult to understand why some of the characters even agree with you or don't. The Warden is once again at the center of all of this. But we know from Thetis' history that Wardens are actually not supposed to be involved in world issues that do not involve the Blight. For some reason, monarchy must be claimed and chosen before we actually fight the archdemon Urthemiel. I remember playing the first time the lands meet and I got super nervous. It was like I was judged by a whole panel all at once. And the cutscene is also very fast paced in comparison to other major choices you do in the game, which made the decision even more nerve wracking than necessary. And I'm sorry, but the cutscene you have with Loghain 
dueling with Alistair or the Warden just makes me laugh so much. I think it looks so awkward in its own form. Regardless, there are multiple outcomes to that lands meet, including who fights with Loghain and what consequences Loghain can face, etc. So whether you're making Alistair, Honora, or anyone else's king, it has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. The Architect's Fate The intelligent Darkspawn appears in the Origins DLC Awakening and is a memorable part of it. Obviously, like Anders, you have the option of killing the Architect as a result of his Blight research. This is another morally ambiguous situation because the Architect's personality and intellect make it appear that killing him just because he's a Darkspawn and Blight is bad is pointless given what he's trying to do for the Blight. And I know more fans favor killing him because there is too much risk in letting him live. After all, he did awaken Urthemiel and cause the fifth Blight. But if he can potentially end Blights, that knowledge would be valuable and fantastic. The Architect is the typical immoral scientist who doesn't give a damn about how he frees the Darkspawns from the calling, whatever the consequence. Unlike in Awakening, where he simply asks you for blood to free his fellow Darkspawn buddy, according to the Dragon Age book The Calling, his true plan of Thetis to rid of the Blight was to turn the entire population into Grey Wardens. Given that Grey Wardens can be potentially sterile, I doubt that plan would have been implemented in Thetis and become successful. If you do spare the Architect, he keeps his word according to the epilogue from Awakening. However, the Bioware writers stated that Awakening was really just created as a result of the developers debating on whether they should have any more Dragon Age games. So far, this decision does not appear to have any effect to the story, but who who knows what will happen next? After all, the character bears a striking resemblance to Corypheus. The Architect would also be a great ally to fight against the Dreadwolf, but it's really up to Bioware writers to bring him back into the new game, if possible. Here lies the Abyss. Based on what I've seen in the fandom, this was one of the most gripping moments in the series thus far. Here Lies the Abyss is a questline where the final decision leaves you perplexed, and it forces you to leave someone behind in the Fade. Your Dragon Age 2 protagonist or the mysterious warden from Crestwood who has decided from your specific world state. Whatever decisions you made in previous games, Hawk is always with you in the Fade. You either have Alistair, Loghain, or Stroud depending on your origin's choices. Stroud, of course, is the default world state in Dragon Age Inquisition. The most difficult decision for some players was whether they had Alistair as the Warden. You must choose between the lives of the second game's protagonist that you played and a fan favorite from the first. If you abandon Hawk, whoever she or he romance will be heartbroken, as will Varric. And if you abandon Alistair, the Wardens will be without a major leader, and needless to say, this is especially difficult if you dated Alistair in Origins. I remember when Inquisition first came out, so many Let's Players were sitting on that choice for easily more than 30 minutes because it is such an excruciating decision. You are left with someone sacrificing their lives, and it feels like it will be the end of them forever. However, some fans hope and plead to Bioware that they should bring back whoever you left in the Fade. That surviving in the Fade isn't actually breaking any lore rules. So it could be certainly possible, and it would remind me and many others of a scene similar to Shepard from Mass Effect 2. Whatever the case, this is one of the most difficult choices from the series. But if you're like me and Inquisition was your first Dragon Age game, you probably easily chose Stroud because you weren't emotionally connected with him. However, for Dragon Age veterans, it may not be the easiest, so please accept my sympathies for all of you out there. But with that, we're going to wrap up five hardest choices you'll have to make in the Dragon Age franchise. Which on this list was your favorite? Also, what difficult decisions have you faced throughout Dragon Age that others may not have? I'd like to see that comment down below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.